However, uh, are, are, can, are we to talk only about quiet? <laughs> are we to talk only about underwater uh, at the moment? Well, um, I did underwater and I had a wonderful time. Uh-huh. The underwater premiere was wonderful. I have two more pictures coming out. Plug, plug. Yes, in, in the, the bathtub. bathtub. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> what are the names of uh, them, Laurie? Destry and the Return of the Creature. The creature? Hey, that's a good name we can use here. Is Destry riding again? I mean, the old uh, routine? Yes. Uh, Gee, I love the, that original the, the picture. The remake. It well, is. is that old, Mike? Would you oh, I'm that old, old but she is a number two for Lori Nelson. Lori, let me find out who sent it in. Sent in by, this is an interesting thing, an absolute tie both on the date and the postmark, so we're sending both of them duplicate prizes. C.B. Lear, Jr. from Hohokus, New Jersey, and Mrs. Janice oh. Caston, Brooklyn, New York. There you are. Oh, don't get scared. Larry Nelson has a quotation from Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is oft interred with their bones, etc. Here we go. Oh. Quotation. quotation. Say. Say. Come on. Lots of words. Okay. Lots of words. Is it a gag? Throw. 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 Oh, Shakespeare. Shakespeare. You know the play. Right. You know the play. Oh. Uh, 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 all right. Um. You. I. 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 Um. Well, that's a good beginning. There's I. I. Like <laughs> um, I am. I. I take up. I, I. I call. I, I bring. Take. I, I came, I, I come I to, came. Say, I come. The Mark Anthony, I come to, I come to, I come to, to very season, 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 I just want to be sure... The fellow at the tarn under, sir. Everyone knows the show's on the level. I'm not sure you... My voice is gone. That you heard, Hans. Now, let's see if you can do it. Give it to me, will you? Friends, Romans, countrymen. Let no, just when I come to... the very season, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is often turned with their bones, so let it be... Thank you, thank you. <laughs> That's it. I just want to go this show. Forty seconds for you, Laurie Nelson and Hans Conrad. Hans Conrad. I am going to murder you in about two seconds. Now, quiet. Elaine Strait, when you step up... I said nothing this time. I don't like to fight or anything. Her uncle is a cardinal. Her uncle is a cardinal. Yes. All right. right. Are you ready? Now, I will be very good and very quiet. You draw your number there. Your team won last Can I have the one on the floor? Do you really want this one on the floor? Not much you want me to have it. No, go ahead. You can have it. I don't know what it is. Number 11. Number 11 for Elaine Strait. Elaine, let me see who sent it in. Sent in by Mrs. Jack Stone, Scranton, Pennsylvania. Move up close, wait for the Rebel on Bell. Elaine Stritch has a punchline. She was only a glue maker's daughter, but her heart is stuck on me. Shakespeare, a punchline. She, she, she was, was, was a, only, only, was only, only a, 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 taffy pull, spaghetti eater, spaghetti, spaghetti, no, taffy. She was only a Nikki. She was a Nikki. Chocolate. She was only, only a. a uh, sounds like. Holy, sounds like. Kiss. Kiss. Mouth. Red. Color. Red. Color. Red. Color. Red. 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 Sounds like. Sounds like red. Sounds like red. Sounds like. Mm. Sounds, sounds like, like color. color. Sounds like. A, ca- sounds like color. She was only a. Sounds uh, like. Oh wait a minute. Yeah. She was sounds only a. Like, no. <laughs> sounds <laughs> like. A glow maker's daughter. daughter. But but, but she but, but she, she no. But her. her but her. But her. Don't get stuck her, her, her heart. Her heart. Now don't rush. But her heart. <laughs> her heart. She liked it. Is mine. Stuck. 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 Glue. In. 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 On. On me. better watch out or she's going to slug you. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to <laughs> fire. Now here's Ozzy with news about Big as Life pictures. Say, do you know what this is? It's a Kodak 35 millimeter color slide. It's not very big, is it? Only two inches by two inches. And yet when you project it on a home screen, you get color pictures as big as life. Now, a Kodak has many fine color slide cameras and a wide range of prices. Here's one I like especially. The new Kodak Signet 50 camera. It has a built-in photoelectric light meter that takes all the guesswork out of exposure. 
You just aim it at your subject, and it tells you how much light there is or isn't. It's just like having an expert photographer showing you which setting to use. The Kodak Signet 50 camera, complete with flash holder, costs $82.50, or as little as $8.50 down. When you see its many fine features, I'm sure you'll accept no other. to do. I haven't played with it for a long, long time. And oh, do I like it. Mm -hmm. I certainly do. What do you do with your ball? Your big ball? You roll it? And sometimes you throw it into something? You know what I want to do with this one? Watch. Just like dropping it. Look, when you bounce it. Just let go. Here you have both hands, and you just let go. Watch. Isn't that fun? 
Where would you bounce a ball? Your ball won't bounce? Why? Oh, it's a big beach ball. Mm -hmm. And it has a place at one end that makes it so it won't bounce. Well, this is a rubber ball. You don't have to have a big ball to bounce it. You can have any size ball. Yes, you can have a little ball or you can have a big ball. But remember that if you miss it, a ball rolls away, doesn't it? And that's what you have to remember to hold on to. If it rolls away out into the street, you wouldn't run after it, would you? No. no. And today, remember, is Friday. So there's no ding-dong school tomorrow and no ding-dong school on Saturday. That's right. But there will be again on Monday. And you're going to have a fine weekend, aren't you? Good for you. You just have a good one. You know what time it is? Hello, all you people out there in Gameland. Today we're going to play an exciting new game called Loop-A-Lot. Now this is based on this scientific principle. You put your finger in the hole, then you take a penny. So you put it right there or you spin it around. I drop my penny. I'll be, I'll be right back. You spin the loop a lot, you stop, or you still got the penny. Now, where did that penny go? <laughs> you can do this with one penny or two. Hmm, where would I be if I was a penny? Penny? Aha, here we are. You see, it's the centrifugal force, the in going to the out, which keeps the penny in place. And if <laughs> and when you get to be a super looper, you can use one, two, or three pennies. loop lot is a parker game. So is Monopoly. Oh. Number one in the life of Elizabeth occurred just before the impending visit of Elizabeth's little niece, Kathy. Well, inasmuch as Kathy was only four years old, Elizabeth and Alvin had to do some studying up on the care and treatment of nieces. Elizabeth, how are you tonight? Well, I see you're getting ready for your little niece's visit, but what's Alvin going to do to make her happy? Why don't you call him in and let's find out. Alvin! Hi. Honey, do you think Kathy's going to like this? Oh, honey, that's real cute. Oh, you're a genius. <laughs> I want her to be happy while she's with us. <laughs> What's that? Mother Goose nursery rhymes. I thought I'd memorize some of them so I could tell them to Kathy at bedtime. <sighs> you're a good man, Alvin. Oh, it's nothing. No, I mean it. You're a good man. Well, thanks. Good, good man. Nothing more than, but than most anybody. Now, don't try to minimize it. You're a good man. Well, okay. A lot of men wouldn't go to all that trouble for a little girl, but you did. You're a good man. Thanks again. That's the wrong answer. What was I supposed to say? That's the wrong answer, too. Who made the doll dresses? Well, you did. I just told you. Oh, you're a good woman. <laughs> good woman. Thank you, sweetheart. You say the sweetest you. thing. <laughs> Why don't you read me some of those? <laughs> Seriously, it was a nice thought, honey. No, all righty. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. What do we? What do we? I know that one. Oh, here. Ding dong bell. Pussy's in the well. Who put her in? Little Johnny Green. The and... nasty little beast. <laughs> Can you sit there with that self-satisfied look on your face while a kid puts a cat in the well? Well, yeah, I didn't write it. Well, you're reading it. Now, don't get excited. There's a moral to the whole thing. Listen to this. What a naughty boy was that to try to drown our pussycat. See? <laughs> That's like saying, I'll be vexed if you shoot Grandpa. Oh, okay. Let's skip that one. I just... I'm sorry, honey, but I feel very strongly about things like that. Well, so do I, honey. I just didn't notice it, that's all. We'll get another one. Let's see. Oh, here, here, this is the one. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Ha. <laughs> is that all? Yeah, that's all. What are they going to do, let him lie there? It's only a nursery rhyme. Humpty Dumpty was an egg. And now he's an omelet. I think that's horrible. 
Well, we'll just skip that one then. <clears throat> hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle, and the cow jumped over the moon. Okay so far? <laughs> sure, that's cute. The little dog laughed to see such sport, and the dish ran away with a spoon. <laughs> that's kidnapping. Why do they mean the dish eloped with a spoon? <laughs> well, then it's too advanced for Kathy. Honey, what else do you answer? Honey, I don't think it's too advanced. It's about a dish and a spoon. Kathy is four years old, and you want to teach her about spooning? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Well, I've got news for you. I'm not ashamed of myself. And how do you like them onions? <laughs> well, if you're going to talk like a child, the least you can do is be grammatical. How do you like them onions? <laughs> Pick up my own stupid nursery rhymes in the other room. You stay right here. I'm not going to have you warping that child's mind without my help. No, thank you. Warping my mind. If there's any warping of minds to be done, we'll do it together. Okay. Now, see if you can find one decent rhyme in that vulgar book. You going to stand up while I read this? Yes. Good, then I'll sit down. Coward. Jack Spratt could eat no fat, and his wife could eat no lean. You keep Mom out of this. I didn't say one word about your mother. I know what you're thinking. So between them both, you see, they licked the platter clean. And I suppose you think that's table manners. I knew that. It teaches the kid to eat all of her food. It licked the stupid platter clean. Like a couple of pigs. Where did I say anything about a couple of pigs? Go ahead, show me. We're screaming at each other like a couple of fishmongers. I wish I were dead. So do I. Then I don't. I purposely left out the part about Little Miss Muffet because you don't like spiders. Thanks a lot. Don't do me any favors. I won't. See if this will please your majesty. Little Jack Horner sat in the corner eating his Christmas pie. His Christmas pie. Make something out of that. Go on. Read the rest of it. That's the part I can't stand. He stuck in his thumb and he pulled out a plum and he said, what a good boy am I. What's wrong with that? His manners are worse than Jack Spratt. What's wrong with Jack Spratt's manners? He licked the stupid platter clean, didn't he? I'd hate to see what he'd do with a bowl of soup. Elizabeth, now listen, you've got to get this in your mind. You're Go ahead, be friends with a bunch of pigs. See if I care. Pigs? I suppose Humpty Dumpty was a pig. He's an egg. Well, what about the king's men? Don't you tell me. If Jack Spratt wants to eat some fat, and if Johnny Green wants to push the cat in the well, he can... Look at the mess they made. And I don't think because it doesn't matter. Somebody said... Listen, I'm talking about... Oh, oh lost honey. my mind. Aren't we a couple oh. of dopes? Oh, what should we do with this? Throw it away? No, it never hurt us when we were kids. <laughs> but I think you better leave me at this point. Why? I'm not fit to live with. All right. I shall leave you at this point. Why? Because you're not fit to live with. Good night, sweetie. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Elizabeth, aren't you ashamed? <laughs> Never before a lipstick so red. An exciting new lipstick. New Viv in six of the most vivid reds any woman has ever worn. One shade is redder than a fire engine. Another shade is redder than a rose. Exciting new Viv. Viv shades from pink to plum look brighter, more lustrous. Because a new way has been found to give depth of color to lipstick. And Viv's bright color stays on. Viv is the comfortable, long-lasting lipstick. Never drying. Viv keeps your lips soft, moist, smooth. Choose your favorite from six vivid shades. Try Viv on your own lips. See what Viv, the really vivid lipstick, can do for you. Never before a lipstick so red. New Viv. The comfortable, long-lasting lipstick. Naturally refreshing, naturally delicious. That's why it's naturally everybody's favorite. There's no substitute for a bottle of Coke, just as there are no substitutes in a bottle of Coke. It's the real thing. Pay a visit to your favorite store, take home plenty, because Coke in the bottle is everybody's favorite. Coke in the bottle is a natural. 
All ready now for round two with Carolyn Carty from Mount St. Ursula Academy and Esther November from the Brooklyn Museum. And this round was sent to us by Arne Ramberg of Brooklyn. Well, Arne, our thanks and $10 from Coke in the Bottle for your series of five tests. We have two newcomers here because of the illness of Jane Quill. Esther and Carolyn, good luck to you in the second round. The score is $20 for Mount St. Ursula in the Bronx against $5 for the Brooklyn Museum. This is going to test the keenness of your sense of sight. And before I, I want to show the folks at home here, we have we have paid a visit the other day to uh, a friend of ours at Trail and Stream, which is owned by uh, uh, Victor Saskis, which is over at 47th Street and 5th Avenue. And this is a photograph of the largest swordfish ever caught, ever caught rather, which uh, weighed over a thousand pounds and is over 14 feet long. Matter of fact, if uh, you'd like to see it, it's right over there at Trail and Stream. And I'm going to mount this right up here on the porch. Can I have that uh, tag? And by the way, you folks might uh, push your chairs aside there if you would, because in just a moment we're going to play a version of pin the tail on the donkey, only in this particular case you want to pin the pin right in the mouth of the fish. Take your place down here at the starting line, you right over there, that's fine, and you right over here. Now we're going to have to have you use your blindfolds. Take a last look and I want each one of you to try and catch that fish by putting it right in the fish's mouth. Okay, goggles on. All right, you got the last look as to where it is? Yes. Now you're going to go first, Carolyn, you first, only one at a time. Let's move that chair away, Peg. Carolyn first, and here she goes. Okay, try, no feeling, now you can't use your left hand. Put your right hand out straight in front of you. Okay. Go ahead, first spot you touch is the spot that you're gonna land on. Hold on just a minute, all right, you got your... Okay, pin it right there. Okay. All right. Here you are. You want to play last minute look? Get a last look? Okay, go ahead. Well, Extend your arm straight in front of you. Okay, you have to put the other arm down. Straight ahead, you're right towards it. <laughs> okay, time's up. You're all the way over here on the side. Take a look where you are. Take your places in the chairs. Okay, sit right down. We have a question for you now that's worth $5. I'll take that from you. And Peg, I think we better take this right out. Can you tell me, and maybe we better leave it here for just a second. Can you tell me the number which was on the long sausage-shaped balloon? Ten. What do you say, Esther? I hope so. They're both right again. Five dollars piece for both of them. Good for them. <laughs> This is more fun than chasing squirrels. I'm a lucky dog to be going along on their vacation. Hi, fellas. Funny looking dogs. Sure grow them big out here. Hey, hey, we're coming to a stop. Must be time for supper. Good, cause I'm hungry. Bet if it weren't for Gainsburgers, I wouldn't be here at all. Cause Gainsburgers go anywhere. They don't have to be refrigerated like canned dog foods. Why, two of those beefy Gainsburgers give me all the nourishment of a one-pound can of the finest dog food, and none of the bother. They give me everything I need and like. Beef, a vegetable, minerals, milk solids, vitamins. It's the canned dog food without the can. Another fine product from General Foods. Have Gainsburgers, we'll travel. Thank you very much. You know, ladies and gentlemen, we're fortunate tonight in having the entire cast from the Paramount Theater on our Bull of a Show. And um, there's Eileen Barton, Joe Bushkin, Tim Herbert, and Don Saxon, and last but certainly not least, Dagmar. And you know, yesterday I invited Dagmar for lunch between shows at one of the very exclusive restaurants in the theater neighborhood over there. Why, it's Eileen Barton and Joey Bushkin. Eileen Barton and Joey Bushkin. Well, okay. And how are you? What would you like to eat? You'd like two hot dogs, I guess, huh? Well, I want two hot dogs with mustard as long as Eileen's Two ordering. Pekingese with yellow noses. <laughs> all, we got, all we got left is knockwurst. All we got left is knockwurst. All we got left is not the. All you got left is not worse. All you got left is not worse. Oh, all, all we got left is not worse. All we got left is not worse. Uh, 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 I'll take the not worse. That's a piano player's license, let's face it. Uh, change the Pekingese to St. Bernard. Twill do, twill do. Anything to drink? Well, I'd like a black cup of coffee. 
coffee. Black cup of coffee? Mm -hmm. Dirty a cup and put some coffee in it. <laughs> Stop with those coffee Anything jokes. to drink for you? I'd like a bottle of beer. Bring me a bottle of Miller's High Life, huh? One High Life for the low life. I'll make the, uh, I'll make the head come to a point. I think it'd be a grand idea. I said I'll make the head come to a point. Well, try it once more. Hello, how are you? Uh, fine. Say, have you, uh, have you seen Dagmar? Dagmar? In this little joint? You'd know if she was here. <laughs> Well, I ran into a couple of fans down the street. And they tore your clothes? Huh? They tore those clothes, no. They're Frankie Lane fans. Wow! Say, uh, are you going to get something? Wow, oh, wow. Well, Tim Herbert and Don Saxon, what are you doing in this restaurant? What do you want, spare ribs? I mean, what do you want, spare ribs? <laughs> In here. Well, we're just helping out while the boss is out to lunch. You mean he doesn't eat his own food? Can't afford to pay the prices. <laughs> Why, there's Blackmar! <laughs> she brings her own music, too. Uh, Mr. Sinatra. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry I'm late. And I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. Well, you came to the right place. Take the saddle off Uncle Milty. Take the saddle, Take the saddle off Uncle Milty. <laughs> you want to sit over here with the kids? Well. Oh, Mr. Bushkin. Howdy, darling. I love the way you lead the orchestra and wave your baton. Thank you, darling. Sweetie. Yeah? It's not baton, it's baton. Oh. Uh, you know Eileen, of course. Oh, yes. How are you, Miss Barton? <laughs> no, Dagmore, it's not Barton, it's Barton. Uh, well, Mr. Bushkin, I love the way you wave your barton. Oh, right. <laughs> what are you going to do? Let's have something to eat. Yeah. Yes. What does it say here? It says, uh, a stickle was a nickel once upon a time. Please. <laughs> but uh, now a stickle is no longer a nickel. It costs you a dime. Oh. Hey, I guess I can afford that. Yeah. Frank, say, uh, yeah. according to my boulevard, I'm late at the theater. I'll see you later. Oh, I'll see you later. Hey, uh, hey uh, Tim. Yes, yes, yes. Can we have a couple of stickles with a few pickles? Sure. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll have. I'll have a pastramai sandwich <laughs> on pumpernickel. Pastramai? Yes, on pumpernickel. Pumpernickel. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? <laughs> say, look, you better take the sandwich along with you. Joe is right. It's getting a little late. You can uh, eat at the theater, huh? Hey, you, you better all get going. We'll be late for the show. Well, Frank, I think we want to stick around here a little bit. Why? What are you talking about? Well, you, well... You want to miss the show or something? So what? We're getting $10 a day to take care of this store. So you kids go right ahead, okay. huh? You go right over the theater. Goodbye. See you Bye. in a while. Bye. $10 a day, huh, to take care of this? Sure. Yeah. Pastrami, anyone? <laughs> You got something to say there? Yes, I have, Jack. When Today, are you going to say it? Right now. Is every this day. minute? Yes, sir. Well, we why, why don't you say it? I'm trying to. Oh, you're going to say it now. Okay, That's the boy. Today is every day. We have gifts not only for our queen, but for every lady interviewed. Yeah. First, the West Bend automatic griddle and server jumbo size with over 200 inches of cooking area. There's plenty of room to prepare two or three foods at once. And each lady will also receive this beautiful Hamilton Beach food converter. One powerful motor operates all three appliances can opener, salad maker, and meat grinder. Don't drop it. And all Hamilton Beach custom appliances what? are guaranteed for five years. There you go. Now, our candidates will enjoy brighter floors with less work, too, thanks to this new lightweight Hoover floor polisher. It will scrub, wax, and polish, as well as beautifully dry, clean, and wet shampoo, carpets, and rugs. <laughs> and for our candidates' very personal pleasure, a gift of France's greatest and most exciting perfume, uh -huh. Fame by Corday. Anything can happen when you wear Fame. Give time, get quick, by Richard Hutnut. This is an egg, and I'm Julia Mead. And nothing puts that magic sheen in your hair like an old-fashioned egg shampoo. Except Richard Hudnut enriched cream shampoo with real eggs powdered into the golden lotion to give all the magic sheen of an old-fashioned shampoo the easy way. See the clean and beautiful sheen on Louise's hair. You'll have it, too, with Richard Hudnut shampoo. And to seal in that sheen, use this perfect shampoo finish. Richard Hudnut Cream Rinse. 